You know our next guest, you know her well. Breakout role uh, in the sitcom Fresh Off the Boat. You've been seeing her name and face out there a lot here lately as well. We'll get into all that. But, of course, you know her from Hustlers, Crazy Rich Asians. And now she has her most personal project. That's right. A new collection of essays titled Making a Scene. She joins us now to tell us all about her book. Please, everyone, welcome Constance Wu. Welcome. Hello. We've been chatting it up with you. Uh, I'm curious about Making a Scene. Um, why the name and what kind of scene have you made? <laughs> oh, many scenes, my love. <laughs> but, um, but the name sort of has a dual meaning. So two of the major themes in the book, um, one is how art is healing. And for me, art was doing community theater. And in theater, you make scenes. In fact, some of the passages in the book are written as scenes from a play or scenes from a screenplay. And then the other theme is sort of what it symbolically means to make a scene. And um, where I grew up in Richmond, Virginia, where you know I sort of learned that it wasn't ladylike to make a scene, it was kind of unbecoming. And how, you know, when you are a kid with big feelings and you suppress those feelings in order to not make a scene, um, how that can be harmful. So we should be more open with our emotions. Constant, have you officially been uncanceled now? Doubtful. Doubtful. I mean, does that happen? <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, I was essentially canceled yeah. for, you know, having a, an un ungrateful moment, having a not perfect moment. And, you know, I'm not perfect. Um, there will still be people who will hold that against me. And that's okay because, honestly, I think that's a reflection of their own journey and the reflection of, you know, how they feel about their own mistakes. And I think that's why I wrote this book so that. I could set an example in terms of somebody who is willing to take ownership of their mistakes in an effort to become better. Because really, what's the point of calling somebody out on somebody unless it gives them the impetus to, to change and become a better person? Did you seek help um, with what oh, you yeah. were going through? Yeah. I got a lot of help. I had to. You know, I, I think as mentioned before, you know, I, I ended up in the hospital after a suicide attempt um, after I got some really horrible, I mean, horrible treatment from the, the press over these tweets where I was, you know, tweeted about not being happy that my television show was being renewed. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, I had been sexually harassed and intimidated and threatened for years on that show, and I never talked about it because I didn't want to stain the reputation of the show. I wanted to preserve everybody else's jobs on that show, so therefore I kept quiet and I swallowed my pain. And, you know, there are multiple reasons why I had that moment of heat on Twitter, but that was a big contributing factor. So when somebody does something that's out of character for them, usually that's not the time to judge them. It's the time to check in because I, <laughs> I wasn't OK. I mean, I ended up in the hospital. But, um, you know, after that, I, I had to be like under observation for a bit. I had to be in therapy every single day and then three times a week. And now I still go once a week. Um, and it's a practice that I, I will continue because just like going to the gym for your physical health, I think checking in on your mental health is just as important. It's huge. And, and things, I, I, I know you wrote about it and you talked to our Juju Chang about that moment when you were holding on the rails and thinking about jumping. Pulling myself over, yeah. What stopped you? Um, a friend, a friend, I mean, thank goodness for friendship, a friend who had come to check in on me because she knew that I was having a hard time. I wouldn't have gone to the hospital. Like, she took me to the hospital and then, you know, to a, to a psychiatric ER. And then I was like, wait, nobody can know about this, so don't even officially check me in. I found out later they did officially check me in because it's like on my like, health insurance and everything um, claim. But, um, yeah, I was just so scared of people knowing that I went through this hard time, of people knowing that it got so dark that I, I went to, to this place, of people knowing that I was not perfect, that I, I had made mistakes. And um, yeah, that's what I needed at that time, was a friend to reach out. And it doesn't mean that she approved of my behavior, because honestly, she probably didn't, but I think you can still express curiosity and compassion for somebody without agreeing with their behavior. And it's a way of understanding your own mistakes better as well. How do you answer that question now? Do you answer it honestly when somebody just says, how are you doing? I mean, it's weird to sit here and most of the time we just walk right past people. How are you doing? I'm fine. Good. And just say that. But how are you doing now? Constance? I'm doing really, really good. Okay. Um, but 
I think it depends on the context. You know, because if it's like a passing quick conversation, <laughs> you don't want to like bog people down. In you this know. moment, this context, sitting here with just the three of us talking, nobody else <laughs> listening. <laughs> How are well, you doing, if you Constance? want to talk about <laughs> gratitude, I mean, I think I'm doing great because I'm very grateful that I have this opportunity to speak mm -hmm. and tell my story, share my story. I'm aware not everybody has that opportunity. And if I, I don't know why I have been given that opportunity, but if I have it, then I think it is my charge to try to do something good with it. And I think that's what I'm trying to do with my story. So to be able to do that and to help people and share um, makes me feel Great, so I'm doing great. That's Thank good. you for asking right. me. Uh, Thank you for checking in. Yes. That's what the book's all about, guys. You're a mom now. You yes. have a two-year-old daughter, uh -huh. yes. Um, what do you hope to give her in terms of advice? That knowing what you went through, that, that, that feeling, that pressure of being perfect, what do you want for your daughter? Um, well, you know, I have an essay in the book at the end that's about my own mother. And I remember there is this moment when I was, like, in my 20s where... I realized that my parents had lives before they had me, which seems so obvious, but I think, um, yeah, I think it's important to, to see that your parents go through things. Mm -hmm. I want her to see that, like, I have a hard time and I seek help, that she can seek help if she's going through a hard time, that going through a hard time is a part of life. It doesn't mean you did anything wrong. It goes away. It might come back, and the next time it comes back, you have better tools to deal with it, and that's how it could actually be a gift in many ways. And so I, I hope she learns that, you know, the hard times in life can be a, a, a learning moment and can make you even better. Constance, um, I want to ask one other, I know you're not naming the producer, but you've talked about the producer that harassed you on the mm -hmm. show. And look, this ABC show, they had no comment uh, about this particular allegation. But is that person still, as far as you know, still working, gainfully employed, mm -hmm. still out there? Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts about that person still possibly being on a set somewhere and maybe well, thinking I think, the same thing happening to someone else? I think um, if you read the essay, I actually have quite a great deal of empathy for him because even though he harassed me, touched me inappropriately, threatened my career at times and had the power to take away my job, um, you know, if I want people to reach out and have empathy and compassion for my difficult time, I'm, I'm going to do the same for people even if they're not great to me. So I do regret not going to HR back then before the Me Too movement when, so there could have been a record of, of the abuse. Um, but I think it's, you know, I, I, I use just an initial so that he doesn't become like a household name the way like Harvey Weinstein is, because I don't want to ruin anybody's life. But I do think um, the awareness of his history and his awareness of, of what it did to me, uh, like I think is, is important. And I think the people in the industry who need to know and who know, I mean, the industry is kind of small, I think we'll take note. And I, that's important to me. But that's, we talk about this all the time. That's an incredible amount of grace <laughs> you that seem is. to be extending to someone. I mean... That puts you through what you say this person puts you through. Well, you know, once a few years ago, yeah. I Googled the phrase, how to be a more forgiving person yeah. <laughs> or how to forgive somebody. And the biggest result I came up with was forgiveness is something you do for yourself, yep. not the other person. So I realized that when I extend that compassion and forgiveness to somebody else, whether it's that Asian actress who... DM'd me trying to get me to kill myself, or it's the producer who sexually harassed me. It doesn't really matter whether or not they deserve my forgiveness. It makes my heart yeah. feel a little bit more free. And so that's why you forgive exactly. somebody, because you do it for yourself. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I do. It's beautiful. And that's a, a Lao Lao, we, we've been just chatting it up, but you got Lao Lao Crocodile yeah. coming out in the movie. I thought you are excited about that. I'm really excited <laughs> about that. A bit, another big theme in my book is how I was a theater kid, <laughs> and I love musical theater. So this is the real me you're seeing in Lao. This is the jazz hands me <laughs> dancing and singing with a crocodile. Um, yeah, and I love, oh, wow. you know, doing a movie that I could share with my daughter one day when she could sit still for more than five minutes. Um, yeah, I, I, I loved doing this movie and I think it's a really heartwarming movie that families will really enjoy. And a lot of my choices now that I have a kid 
are about family. Yeah. And that includes the career choices I make, well, like cool. Lyle Lyle Crocodile, doing a family, <laughs> a family movie. Uh, you, can, you can see you just owning it all. So congratulations Thank on you. the book. Congratulations on your continued success in your career. And congratulations as a mom. Thank you. And thank you for having me on the show. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Constance, uh, we appreciate you and want to let everybody know Making a Scene is available now everywhere books are sold. And to our viewers, we do want to remind you, if you are someone you care about, maybe experiencing suicidal, substance abuse, or other mental health crises, please call or text the new three-digit code 988. You'll reach a trained crisis counselor for free, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also go to 988lifeline.org to chat. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.